and then later on look them up and study them and read them for yourself. One of the places I want you to write down is Proverbs uh, chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, that's something for you to take home with you. And uh, it talks about the virtuous woman. And it describes her. It says, a uh, uh, wife or a virtuous woman is valuable, above, far above rubies and jewels. My wife's worth more than all the diamonds in the world to me. But it is Memorial Day, our well, Memorial Day is coming up, but this is Mother's Day, right? I guess they both start with M. Maybe that's why I get confused, I don't know. But on May 8th, 1914, United States Congress set the second Sunday in May aside to honor mothers. And so that's they've been going on. The poem says, of all the earthly things God gives, there is one above all others. It is the precious, priceless gift of a loving Christian mother. I wished all mothers were Christians. You know, they said some women are going to be out today protesting at churches. They said, mainly mentioned Catholic churches because they're against abortion. But uh, they might, I don't know. Carol said, what would I do if the, some come here and protested? I'd probably try to ignore them. Because what they'd want you to do is get all excited about it and call the newspaper out and then that would further their cause. And what they're all upset about is they're afraid they'll do away with abortion. Although that's not going to happen, even if the Supreme Court would rule the way they're talking, each individual state would decide what they did in that state. That's the way they should have done it originally anyway. Just those guys in those black robes shouldn't have decided that. They should have gone to all the states. Same, old, same thing, honestly, with homosexual marriage. Should have gone to the states. And then you'd get the vote. Otherwise, but it really is. The Supreme Court supposed to make laws? No. No, Congress makes the laws. The Supreme Court is the one that interprets so many says how, what, what we should do with them. Right. But they've moved over and they've gone more into politics now. And somebody says, I thought we were talking about mothers this morning. We don't, we don't want to uh, talk politics all morning. That's right. I'm not going to either. But sometimes I get things bother me. You know, they're doing everything they can to destroy families. Mm -hmm. And if you destroy the family, you've destroyed society. And that's a lot of why you're having all these people getting shot in Indianapolis. A lot of those, you know, anybody remember some years back, they used to come on TV about 10, 11 o'clock at night and say, do you know where your children are? Yep. You ever heard that lately? Mm -hmm. Anybody heard that lately? Mm -hmm. oh, used to all the time. When I was a kid. Yeah, but a lot of the parents now don't know where their kids are at at night. But a lot of the problem there is the family is not what it used to be. And uh, a lot of kids don't even know who their dad is. Mm -hmm. Well, I had three dads. Four if you count God. My birth dad, I didn't know him. I've seen a picture of him. My name would have been Beyonce or Bianchi or Bianchi, however you want to pronounce it. I can spell it for you, B-I-A-N-C-H-I. I had a hard time learning to spell that. Stone's a lot easier. Yep. And, uh, you know, but my mother, I think I was probably 17 when she, she was 17 when I was born. That's pretty young. She only had an eighth grade education come off the farm now in Kentucky, ran away from home during the war. You know, you could work in a factory, she's 15, 16 years old. That, that was easier than working on the farm, I guess. But anyway, you know, uh, the flower for mothers is a carnation. 
And that's what Carol has in the vase back there. Aren't those carnations? I'm not good on flowers. I know a rose when I see it, the tulip, a few things like that, but I'm not too good on telling you what the flowers are, you know, but I believe those are carnations. And a carnation is a symbol of mother and it stands for sweetness, purity, and endurance. Oh, really? You know, they talk about the women being the weaker sex. Some ways I think they're stronger. Amen. I mean, I don't know, you know, it probably takes something you risk your life to have a little baby. And then some people, you know, they... But I'm thankful for my mother, my grandmothers. They're, I think most of them, if not all of them, are in heaven. On both of sides of the family. I had one great-grandmother lived to be, what, over 100 years old. My mother made it to 76. Carol's made it to 93. And then on the... So I'm thankful for those. I preached a lot of their funerals. Somebody says, was that hard? It's not hard if you believe they're in heaven. That's right. Amen. But if there's a doubt about it, it'd be a lot harder. But I believe, since I believe they're in heaven, I'm going to see them again. If I go to heaven, right, you go to heaven, then we'll be in heaven together. Uh, it'd be nice if your whole family went to heaven. Amen. Remember Paul and Silas were in jail in Acts 16, 31, I believe it is, says, what must I do to be saved? And he said, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Somebody says, well then if one parent gets saved then all the kids get saved too? No, but there's a good chance that if the parents get saved they'll lead the children to become Christians. Aren't we supposed to try to set them an example? And really there's a lot of things about uh, these things. I, I like this little story and I've used it and used it. Some of you haven't heard it though, but some of you say, I've heard that before. Little Katie was asked a question in fractions. If your mother made a pie and there were eight children and you and, and mother and dad, I think that'd be ten people, right? Eight, mom and dad, that'd be ten. And uh, uh, then the question was, she said, uh, they asked this little girl, Katie said, if uh, your mother made a pie, the teacher said, "Didn't don't you know?" Said, uh, uh, "How much of the pie would you give?" She said, "A ninth. And the mother said, "Don't you know your fractions?" Or the teacher said, "Don't you know your fractions?" Well, if there's ten people and you cut a pie, and divide it for ten people, what would you get? A tenth. A tenth. And then Katie said, yeah, but uh, you don't know my mother. She'd say she didn't want any. <laughs> well, aren't a lot of mothers like that? Mm -hmm. They would give up something so their kids would have more. My mother was that way. And if you have a mother like that? Of course, Carol's mother was raised without... Her mother died when she was real young, seven. seven years old. And then her dad wasn't able to take care of her, so she, they just moved her from family to family, in the family to take care of her. Sometimes they'd say well, they didn't even want to take care of her, but somebody had to do it. How would you like to grow up like that? But you know, her mother turned out one day she taught your kids, you just do right. And if they made fun of anybody else, boy, they were in trouble. You don't make fun of other people. Well, her mother said, well, if I could have gotten more education, I might have been a better, been able to do more in life. She raised, what, four kids, one son and three daughters. I got that right? None of them has ever been in jail. None of them have ever been on drugs. None of them have ever been divorced. Well, I think she did pretty good. What do you think? Amen. Maybe it was because she set them an example. 
when she got older, she wanted to come join our church because she said, uh, "I don't." When they put the obituary in the paper, I want them to know I go to church somewhere. And uh, she'd been to belong to a First Baptist in Vincennes, Indiana. I, I wrote down there and tried to get them to send us her letter. And uh, they said, well, our records don't go back that far. But she was in her 90s. But so she joined Bible Baptist before she died. So we could put that in the, in the obituary. Carol and I were there with her when she died. She got the fluids building up around her heart. But you know, really, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, that's part of the Ten Commandments. And it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor your father and mother so you'll live long. That's a promise. Amen. But, you know, if you listen to mom and dad, they'd probably tell you to stay out of the street so you won't get run over. Don't do drugs. They'd probably tell you good things. They'd probably try to protect you, wouldn't they? And so they would tell you things to protect you. But you know what a lot of the kids tell their mom and dad? You don't want me to have any fun. Is it really they don't want them to have fun or they don't want them getting hurt? They say they don't want them hurt. And so they go out of their way. You know, it's a great privilege to have children. Carol and I never really had any of our own other than we raised Martin and Brian. We got them when they were pretty young. We never were able to have any of our own. But my dad that raised me wasn't my birth dad. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old he will not depart from it. So I'll teach him to pray and want to teach them right from wrong. But now, you know, how could you introduce your children to God if you don't know God? That's right. So mom and dad need to get saved and then be an example for the children. Want to teach them to love Jesus. Like I say, it's a great privilege to have children. Psalms 127 verses 3 through 5 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is the reward is a reward his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children in the in thy youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Well, it's good to have them, children. Of course nowadays it's pretty expensive to support them, isn't it? You know, it used to be, and I think God's pattern was that dad would go out and work and the mother stayed home. But now it's gotten to the point where you can't hardly live on one income. It's pretty hard, isn't it? And the way things are going right now, with the inflation and all, it's even making it harder. It's making it even harder. But I believe if you will try to do what God leads you to do, and gives you children, he'll help you to support them and take care of them. And I had several things I wanted to talk about this morning. I know I'm not being very organized, but uh, I had some questions I might ask. When does life begin? Once you're coming out of the mother's womb? Or while you're inside the mother? Well, would that have an effect on whether you believed in abortion or not? Yes, sir. Well, you think maybe we ought to go by the Bible? Amen. Well, I don't know. Some people aren't going to go by the Bible. They go by whatever society says. Psalms 139. Let's go there. Psalms 139. This is a great psalm. Basically, it says God knows everything. God is everywhere. And you can't go anywhere to get away from God. But some people, you know, they think they're going to never face God. I think everybody's going to face God sooner or later. Don't you? He created you in the first place. 
one day when we get down to the end of our lives, we're going to face God. Psalms 139 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and know, uh, know me. Thou knowest my down sittings and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compass my path and my laying down and, and art acquainted with all my ways. Does God know all about you? He probably knows what time you went to bed last night. He might even know when you went to sleep. Sometimes you go to bed, you can't go to sleep right off. Matter of fact, Carol told me last night, I sit up on the side of the bed. A lot of times my arm gets numb and I go sit in the living room, sleep the rest of the night in there. She, she says, lay down. Don't get out of the bed and go in there and sleep because I've got sleep apnea, so it blows air through my nose. And otherwise, every 30 some seconds, I quit breathing said that used to scare but I told her that this morning she says I don't remember that <laughs> she might have done it in her sleep I don't know but she's been thinking about that and here lately I need to sleep in the bed more but here it says God knows when we sit up stand uh, he knows all about us uh, down to verse 7 whether shall I go from thy spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence. Where can you go to get away from God? Well, you know, when I used to drive a Coke truck and a lot of the bars I would go in, I'd go in there. Uh, of course, outside it's sun shining and I'd wear sunglasses. I'd go in a lot of the bars. I'd have to take my sunglasses off. It's so dark in there I couldn't see. Why do they, why they keep it dark? Because a lot of people don't want to be seen. They don't want God and other people knowing what they're doing. But one time I come walking out. Of course, I had my Coke uniform on. I was delivering Coke. And uh, I come walking out, and I hear somebody honking their horn and waving and yelling at me. And I looked over, and it was my preacher. Here I'm coming out of the bar. <laughs> and uh, But I did have my Coke uniform on. And the Coke truck was set. But I know another guy that worked with me, and he said that uh, he, he was sitting in front of this packaged liquor store, and a preacher come out carrying a brown paper bag. <laughs> he said he quit going to that church. But anyway, let's read some more. Still, I'm still going down through here. On, but he says in that seventh verse, "Whither shall I go from thy spirit?" Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold, hold me. But I want to skip on down, and I want to show you something about when, when life actually starts. Go down to verse 13. says, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Does God know you when you're in your mother's womb? You know, years ago, uh, they couldn't see a lot of things. Now, now they can do a scan and see the baby inside the mother. That's true. At a real young age, they can see their fingers and see them move around. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And they don't have to be very old. They, they start getting fingers and toes and moving. And For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. And then go down to verse 16. For thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which uh, in con con continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Was well, a baby just some kind of ooze? Or is it a human? Before it's born? Yes, sir. Or you have to wait till it's born? Now, I have heard in the Orient, some countries, they count you a year old when you're born. Because yeah. it takes them out about nine months in the mother's womb for you to develop. But you develop pretty fast. How many babies have they aborted in America? Uh, 
You know, it's uh, when does life begin? I believe it begins when you're conceived. Sperm and egg come together. That's when it begins. And it's not when you come outside of your mother. Now I ask you about, well, what if God had just created Adam and not Eve? Well, how many people would be in the world? Go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20. I want you to see something there. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. I want you to read one verse. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Isn't that something? And then, then nowadays you get into all this woke racism and stuff that's going on. You know, we all came from the same ancestors. Of course, you, then you, you got to get up to the flood and then it divides off into Ham, Sham, and Japheth. How many sons did Noah have in the ark? Three, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Those are the three groups of races. And uh, so we're actually, if you go back, well, I'll go back to Adam and Eve, don't we? Does that mean if you were black or white or any other color or anywhere in between? I believe it would. So when does life begin? We talked about what if God had not made the mothers? You wouldn't be here. The world wouldn't be what it is. But they're trying to destroy motherhood. They're trying to destroy the family. They're uh, teaching the kids in the schools that all white people hate all black people and that all black people are being persecuted. And since all this COVID stuff's going on, people are starting to realize what they've been teaching. And parents are saying, we don't like that. Would you want them to teach your kids that? But then the government says they have the say so. Do your kids belong to the government? God gave them to you. Now the government's coming up with they want to set up a deal where they can decide what truth is. Well, I sure want some politician to tell me what the truth is. <laughs> Don't you? No, I think I'll go with God. Amen. I think God. Jesus said in John 14, 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man come to the Father but by me. So I, I believe Jesus taught, tells us about the truth. And then, you know, we get in. What is freedom? What is freedom? I think in America, thankfully, we have a Constitution and a Bill of Rights. And it says we have a right to pursue happiness. And that... You know, we have a right to life. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. You have liberty. I think they're trying to take more and more of our liberties away. That's right. I really do. And somebody says, well, I don't know about all that. Well, I want you to look with me. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. You know, if the devil had his way, he'd completely control you. I'd rather have God control me. I want you to see something in Ephesians chapter 2 talks about grace. Grace is something that God gives us that we don't deserve. It's free. You can't work for it. God gives it to you. If you just trust Jesus, He'll give you His grace. About well, I don't know if everybody could. How many here could quote Ephesians two eight nine? Can anybody quote that? Now come on, I know some of you can't. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And now what it says? Now how many could have quoted it? Uh, now, I know you might be shy. And maybe some of you can't. If you come to church here long enough, you'll probably eventually be able to, because I'll say it over and over and over and over and over and over. Uh -huh. Anybody here learn verses from me just saying them over and over? I guess I'm a troublemaker. 
Well, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, and I wanted to read some of this. Verse 1, and uh, uh, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Before you got saved, that was you. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. The devil had control of you. Now, I know you might have thought, well, I run my own life. Do you really? I think all the power in the world comes from two sources. From God or the devil. Sorry. Now, go to verse 2. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Well, who do you think's running this world right now? Somebody says, well, God is. Well, let's read and see what we can find out here. Where in times past we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, and the children of disobedience. Who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan. And he's trying his best to control the world. And before you get saved, you're a part of the world. We are born into this world, weren't we, physically? Now, in order to change from that, let's read on. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Before you got saved, you're just living for self in the world. Among whom also we had all our conversation. And that doesn't just mean what you say, that means how you live. That word conversation. In times past, the lust of our flesh fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who gave, uh, gave, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. You know, God loves you. God loves you if you're not even saved. He loves you. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus came to die for the whole world. In John 2, 2 it says, And He is a propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. When Jesus died on the cross, He died to pay for the sins of the whole world. But it's up to you whether you want to accept it or not. That's right. You don't have to. He made you with a will. You can choose to follow God or the devil. Somebody says, well, I'm not going to follow either one. No, you're going to follow one or the other. Right. And I don't know, sometimes I think we flip. Oh, and sometimes I might have to get in to explain what the old and the new nature and how they work. Where would you go to study that? Anybody got any ideas? Romans chapter 7 and chapter 8. And you don't want to stop in Romans 7. Yeah. you got to get into Romans 8 to get straightened out. Now let me read on. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins and hath, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, ye are saved. You know, you were dead in your sins, but God quickened you and made you alive. You ever, you ever talk about you got a, a quick under your fingernail and you cut your fingernail in too deep? Does it hurt? You get into the quick. Boy, you know you're alive then. <laughs> and many always talk about people go around, I don't know if I'm really here. Well, I'll get a pen and stick you with it. <laughs> Are you here or aren't you here? Are you real or aren't you real? Oh, we're real. Is this a real world? And then we have to make decisions how we live in it. And the decisions we make how we live in the world now is going to determine what's going to happen to us in the eternity. Amen. Verse 6, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you trusted Christ, then one of these days you're going to be with Him in heaven. That's what it says. And we're as good as there now if we're saved. Oh, well, I've got to be good or I might lose it. Oh, what's it? look at that verse again. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That, it, uh, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. 
It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. You're going to get to heaven and say, boy, I worked my way in here. <laughs> no. Are you going to get up there and say, Peter, will you let me in? No. I think it would be Jesus lets you in or doesn't let you in by what you believed about Him. Verse 10, For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And somebody says, well, you're not talking at all about Mother's and Mother's Day. And, you know, I, I'm, I can give you some verses. I'm not going to turn and read to them all. But right now, I want you to look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Now, I'll keep you too long doing this and a little longer for what through all of this. But John chapter 8, there's a couple places. Oh, you're really free. John chapter 8, go down to verse 32. John chapter 8. <coughs> We're going to the 32nd verse, it says. And ye shall he and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you Do you know the truth? Jesus. What is the truth? The truth is that the devil got Adam and Eve to sin. We came through the line of Adam and Eve. We're all sinners. If we don't put our trust in Jesus and let Him take our place and pay for our sin, we're going to have to pay for it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, life. No man come to the Father but by. Is it by you joining Bible Baptist Church? No, sir. Is it by getting put under some water? But I think you ought to join Bible Baptist Church and get put under some water. Amen. Or do something for God. Has God done anything for you? Everything. Well, if you've got a good husband and wife, God's done something for you. If you have children, God's done something for you. If you have a good mom and dad, God did something for you. Like I say, I had three. They weren't all good. The last one was. The middle one was the one that was the problem. For me, anyway. Now I want you to read another verse here. Go down to verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be what? Now how does he how does the son make you free? He shed his blood on the cross to save you. So you don't have to listen to the devil anymore. Amen. You can tell the devil to go away and leave you alone. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But if you don't resist him, I think he'll make a camp there. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile. It's the way the devil works. You know, the, the apostles were arguing about who was the greatest in the kingdom. And uh, Jesus uh, had them bring a little child over and says, unless you, you're not going to enter into the kingdom unless you have faith like a little child. It's not who's the greatest. If, are you even going to make it? If you're saved, you will. And then... The disciples, one time they were bringing all these little children to Jesus and, and uh, they said, oh, he doesn't have time. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Another place he said, you know, if you hurt one of these little kids, you ought to have a millstone tied around your neck and bed thrown in the deepest sea. So I says, can you find all that in the Bible? Well, I think I can or I probably wouldn't be telling you this. You know, what are children's rights? Mother says, well, I've got a right to abort my little child if I want to. Is that what's, has that gone on or not? You can get into all kinds of things with that, but God loves the little children. We ought to. You know, Sometimes we get into some things we wish we hadn't, but we can't go back and undo things. Look at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And there are several things that we can look at. But... Hmm. 
Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. Mark chapter 10, go to verse 13. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, forbid them not, for such are the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. So you have to have faith like a little child has in order to be able to go uh, into heaven. And the disciples are debating about, well, who's the, going to be the greatest in the kingdom of the disciples? Maybe the little child is. We were, anybody here, were you ever a little child? We all were, weren't we? But really, the children are a gift from God. Look at Psalms 127. Psalms 127. And verse 3. Psalms 127. Seven verse three says, "The Lord hath done great things." Yeah, I'm on the wrong chapter. Chapter. All. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty hunter, so are children of thy youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And so the. Really, when we, it's a great responsibility to have children. The Bible says if we train them up, they'll not depart from it. They'll live the way God wants them to live. They can get saved. I've only got really one other main place I want to go to. I, I believe mothers deserve honor. My mother struggled to raise me. Really, the way I lived a lot of the time, and somebody said, well, really? Yeah. My mother worked all week, and she just had me on the weekends. And my brother. My brother's 22 months younger than me. And she'd say, well, take care of your little brother. Well, I was but 22 months older than him. We stayed with all kinds of different families. And I think I grew up thinking I need to take care of my little brother. He sure picked a lot of fights and I ended up fighting him. Yeah. He'd go pick a fight and then he'd bring him over to me and then I'd get into it. Oh well. Now I didn't go pick the fights. But you know, why, why, what should we be trying to do with our children? We'll be trying to bring glory to God. Whether that, 1 Corinthians 10 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all the glory of God. Then one other place I want to go to, and I'll quit. We already, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. I think we already got into this, but. Ephesians chapter 6. And like I say, I preach my mother's funeral, preach my dad's funeral. I don't really like preaching funerals. But it helped because I believe they're in heaven. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, 
For this is right, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Well, what's the promise? Long life. He goes on, verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, you know what would be an awful thing? Somebody says, how can I honor my mother? Well, uh, Saul, Saul, Solomon had his mother. She came in, and of course he's the king. And he sees that they're on his right hand. That's the place of honor. Amen. We ought to honor our mother. D.L. Moody said one time, the world is yet to see what God can do with one person. One person completely surrendered to God's will, he said in his heart, by, God's, by the grace of God, I will be that man. Wouldn't it be good if your children would get to a place like that where they'd honor God? You know there's a purpose for your being here? Amen. Somebody says, yeah, I've got to go down to Coke and make Coke. I did do that for 40 years. I think it's more important to take care of my wife and Martin and Brian. I think that was the bigger job I had. And just live for God. Are you trying to live for God? And try to help your family live for God. You know, you'll never truly be happy until you're doing what God wants you to do. You think, how can I honor my mother? And there's different ways. You could buy her a flower. You could get her a card. You could get her some candy. Well, I don't know if you had a lot of money, you could buy her a diamond ring or a car. Of course, when Carol and I were getting married, they said, uh, would, we take, uh, would I take her for richer or for poor? I started laughing. Because I figured it'd be poorer. Matter of fact, she's got the first ring that I gave her that she's made into a locket. And I was looking at the other day, the diamond's so little you can't hardly see it. And then she wouldn't give something like that up. She thinks that's valuable. It's not the diamond or the ring, it's the, that you cared about somebody. You think, can I honor my, how can I honor my mother? If you're not saved, the best thing you can do is get saved. Just get saved. If you're not saved, uh, you can uh, honor by being saved. And uh, it would be a shame for a mother to suffer giving birth to a child, feed you, clothe you, change your diaper when you couldn't take care of yourself, and sacrifice to raise you and teach you. And then you'd grow up and die and go to hell. When that, I, you know what I think would make any mother happy? Or their children get saved. Amen for their children to be saved. My mom and dad took me to church when I was younger and I got saved. Been saved ever since. Sometimes I think now, I wish my mom and dad were still alive. <coughs> I'd like to have been a better son. Although I never got in a lot of trouble. I guess I shouldn't tell this, but my brother, he he didn't like going to school. And so they put him in school and he'd skip school. And he skipped school and so then he didn't graduate, so they put him in summer school. He skipped summer school. So then they put him in night school at Tech. He skipped night school. <laughs> and finally, when he got in the army, he got a GED before he went to Vietnam. <coughs> but I didn't, you know, I never missed a day of school all the way through high school. Now the day I was supposed to go and be there to get my award for not missing a day, I was late. <laughs> and everybody's sitting there in the convocation looking around. 
Where's he at? Where's he at? He hadn't missed a day all year uh, for th all the way through high school. Where's he at? <laughs> they gave me a little medal for not missing. I did make it that day. I was just running a little late. I even had surgery one time on a Friday and went back to school on Monday. I just like didn't. I like going to school. I like going now, but I can't afford it. But now maybe if I went, the government would pay for my student loan. Now what they're talking about? But be nice, I guess. But we ought to live and get saved and try to glorify God, and that will make your mom and dad happier than anything you can do. Just get saved and live for God. Let's all stand.